Okay, let's get into it then. We've got two gentlemen who have got to know each other quite well over the last month or so. Um, Nick Miller and Laurie Whitwell. Are you two ready to spend time together again now? I miss I him every day. Wait for the Christmas party. Yeah. That's, that's obviously happening after Christmas. You're going to be S- staying it- together in a car somewhere or? Yeah, we're gonna uh, we're just gonna bunk up outside, um, just to <laughs> bit of a you know re- re- revive the spirit of uh, of our World Cup journey. Just for anyone who doesn't know, we, me and Laurie travelled across seventeen countries, seventeen days to reach the World Cup in Doha, and we became very close in that time. Yes, you certainly did, and people can read about it, watch it, listen to it, the journey. Um, I'm sure people have seen it already in the build-up to the World Cup. But if you missed it, you can go back and have a listen to that. Lots of fun, certainly. You've been united again, writing about Cristiano Ronaldo this week as well. Uh, Nick, you wrote about his unveiling in Saudi Arabia. It definitely was Saudi Arabia, wasn't it? It was Saudi Arabia. Uh, He said South Africa. The funny thing about, I mean, it's just a slip of the tongue. Could happen to anyone. But the, the the funny thing I found about that was that he didn't correct himself and then no one yeah. Dead to correct him as well as like uh it, we, it does he does he know he's he's in saudi arabia he's not in south africa we can, can we say anything can we do, no you, you say something you say something no 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 one's gonna say anything um but yeah it was a a, a slightly odd moment in a, a a unveiling of many many odd moments was that the standout liner well <laughs> I thought that the the standout bit was where he was talking about, he said something along the lines of, well, not something along the lines of, here's what he actually said. In Europe, my work is done. I I won everything, played for the biggest clubs, and now I have a new challenge, which is kind of objectively true. He's pretty much won everything in club football, almost won everything in international football as well. But um, it, it was it just sounded like a man trying to convince himself in kind of real time that this was all a good idea and this is exactly what the plan was and this is this is what he wanted he's it's like he, he's trying to convince himself that i've completed european football so now i must move on and take my talents to somewhere somewhere else ricardo regifé um laurie you've written about him nick teased the fact that you'd written the article a moment ago as well um it's a very very revealing read um a sort of peek behind the curtain of this deal so to speak And I think the most fascinating aspect of it, people obviously can go and read it on The Athletic right now if they want to know um, exactly what you've written. But I think the most interesting aspect about it is this idea of of George Mendes, who's been such a huge influence and guiding figure, father figure, actually, I think Ronaldo's called him in the past, over Ronaldo's career, not really being a part of things the same as before. No, not involved in this deal, um, categorically. So that's a huge sea change from what we've had throughout Ronaldo's career, dating back to sport in Lisbon, you know, uh, Mendes has been the guy that has facilitated moves to Manchester United, Real Madrid, Juventus, back to Manchester United. You know, we uh, recall um, Ed Woodward on the phone to him in his back garden, you know, as Gary Lineker told us on, on the phone to George Mendes, doing that deal late on, having convinced the Glazers that he was worth it for the commercial impact that he'd have on the club. Um, and I do think you have to look at the social media following. I think Al Nasser... Uh, their Twitter went up from like 500,000 to like 9.1 million uh, just because Ronaldo signed. So that's Is the that kind right? of, it's it's, in, it's incredible. Uh, I mean, Ronaldo has a bigger in social what media. In time frame, Laurie? Since he's joined, since he got announced. So what has it been, a week? Yeah. yeah. So they, in, so they, in, same, same with Instagram as well. They're, they're, mm. they're, their following has just exploded. I mean, they've got more followers now than you know many, you know, so Roma, uh, Leicester, you know, sort of clubs, you know, that you'd think would have, you know, sort of decent followings. Um, and I mean, yeah, he's, he's he's bigger social media footprint than Manchester United, even. So, um, so that was the idea behind that. And, and George Mendes was instrumental to that. And, and you know, he has a good relationship with Sir Alex Ferguson, for example, um, throughout the years. Uh, and but now that's changed. Um, you know, there's more reports in Spain that that's that's it that they are have split. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at that. That's kind of the implication that we've got although we haven't had it absolutely confirmed but he wasn't involved in this deal um and we talk in the in the article about why that might be there's sort of different versions of what's gone on there where one idea populated by people that have a good idea so it's not just pure speculation but is that um Mendes was ad- advising Ronaldo to not do the interview with Piers Morgan or at least not lay as much bare in that interview you know to try and 
be diplomatic in the circumstances and also from a football perspective actually stay at United I mean maybe it was it was you know a thankless task that and it was already broken there but you know that actually if you can finish your this this contract at Manchester United in a kind of positive way helping the team um, okay you're not going to be a starter every week not going to be integral but um, you can, you know, at least have that solid relationship with the fans because it does seem like it's it's become a little bit fractured with United fans. I know not all of them, and I know many will absolutely support Ronaldo for all that he's done for the club in previous years. But it does feel like it's, that's that's not quite as unified as it once was, and I think Mendes was alert to that fact. Um, and so, yeah, so whether whether Ronaldo's then gone, well, actually, I don't appreciate the advice you're giving me. I'm, I'm going my own way. Or whether it was Mendes actually saying, "Okay, I've I've given you as much as I can. Maybe it's best that you go alone now in this next step of your career." Um, instead, the person that's that's negotiated the deal, although we're, we're told he's not the agent in this deal, I don't know if that's a specific um, point to make, is Ricardo Regifé, as, as you mentioned, who is a really interesting character. He's known Ronaldo for just as long as George Mendes, maybe even longer. He was um, the uh, uh, representative at Nike who handled Portugal's. Um, relationships with that sponsor so he would go to like photo shoots and things like that when Ronaldo was still a teenager at Sporting Lisbon and it's been sort of 20 years where they've grown really really close they, they are friends uh, and he's become his personal manager since 2018 so he's, he's been you know absolutely at the coalface of Ronaldo's career he's someone that United dealt with Richard Arnold has spoken to him uh, at various levels the communications team will have spoken to him to try and just you know get a sense of what Ronaldo was up to and, and whether he could do certain media appearances uh, and he's regarded as a very good operator from everybody that we speak to. So um, he's been the one that's actually had these kind of talks with Al Nasser. Um, and then Ronaldo also has had uh, some direct contact with them before signing. And also there's a lawyer involved as well. Um, so, but it's, it's yeah, it's quite a significant moment that George Mendes hasn't been involved in, as you said, Ian, at the start, the most moneyed move in, in football history. So, so Ronaldo's negotiated this himself in part? I think in part, yeah. I mean, we we were told that by one agent in particular that, um, and, and we've actually had this backed up since the piece came out uh, from other sources, that Ronaldo had uh, called European club um, executives himself, at least one for sure, uh, to sort of say, what about a move? And, um, you know, the, the response um, when we speak to people close to Ronaldo say, no, that, that didn't happen. Um, but then at the same token, you know, he has been involved in this move with Al Nasser directly. So, you know, I don't know where that, whether it's a, a call to say, you know, please sign me, or whether it's a call to kind of just have a an introduction and a hello, you know, I, I guess these things can be interpreted in different ways. But um, I, I certainly feel that Ronaldo has taken the initiative more than he ever has done in his own future. And you could see that with the interview, you know, that was something him and Piers Morgan clearly have a direct relationship. And he wanted to do that interview and he wanted to be, as forceful with it as he was. So, you know, he clearly is at a point in his career where he's not going to be told by anybody what next steps to take. Nick, can you imagine being sat in your office on a on a Wednesday afternoon, feet up, you know, happy running your football club, quite successful, and you just get a random call from Cristiano Ronaldo asking if he can join? Uh, that is bizarre, isn't it? it? It'd be the sort of classic, um, you know, who's pranking me, who's... who's uh, which of my friends is putting on this kind of Portuguese accent kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Is it? I find the, the the Mendes thing is really interesting because I don't, the, the the film that was made about Ronaldo six seven years ago now it, it's quite a good film, but it sort of it 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 creates this image of Ronaldo living in this very strange world. This he obviously lives in a, a sort of not not entirely real bubble where he goes from his kind of house with high walls to training and then back again and he doesn't have any real contact with the the outside world um and i i kind of spoke to the the director of the film who pretty much said that was true as well and one of the only connections with the outside world was george mendes there was there was the impression given that he he didn't really wasn't really close to many people other than you know Mendes and his his family. So to kind of break with someone who has not only guided his career for so long, but um, but has sort of uh, been a kind of friend or or as close to a trusted friend as someone in that kind of position gets is is quite strange. I mean, is the 
Laurie, is this kind of sense that he, he you say in the piece that Mendes basically said, "Look, just stay at United, pal, uh, and make them make the best of the situation." Mm. Is that because Mendes had basically gleaned that no one else of sufficient stature in Europe wanted him? That is the only reading I can take. You know, he he surveyed the scene. We we heard all last summer that Mendes was doing his utmost to try and get Ronaldo a move that he wanted. Um, Sports in Lisbon is one that springs to mind right now, um, where um, the money of that thing would have been difficult. But it was it was proposed to me that um, could the owners of the club um, help with the finance of that, like kind of put their hands in the pocket. Um, ultimately, the coach didn't want him, Almerim, um, a, a positive young coach, and I think he pushed back at that. You know, he was diplomatic in public, you know, saying you know maybe maybe not. You know, we, you know we can have a look at it, but. I think behind the scenes he pushed back. So so Mendes was well aware, and there's there's multiple examples. You know, Bayern Munich have, have said they got contacted. You know, so, so many clubs have actually. It's kind of been odd. Borussia Dortmund have come out and said we were contacted, and thanks, but no thanks. So it does sort of represent where he's at. And I think it's not just, and, and this is not to denigrate his his talent because he, he still is a you know. I mean, he scored a goal at Everton this season. It was a brilliant finish for a uh, won the game for Manchester United. So he's clearly a an incredible talent still and he's he's had so much great service but I think it's just the whole package that you get with Ronaldo that clubs are looking at so not, not only the financial but as you've touched on there this idea that he will just find it so difficult to be told you're on the bench today um, or you know this this player starting instead of you and actually can you give me 20 minutes at the end of the game it, it, it just basically it seems to me he is absolutely I have to be starting every game um, and clearly he will be at Al Nasser Um and I find it really fascinating how he will actually perform on the pitch because he's so used to, you know, these huge games with with great crowds. I mean, like I said, last season, I mean, he scored so many pivotal goals for United and he had such a connection with the fans, even though there was all this other stuff going on. And you can have understanding of why he was so annoyed at what was going on because you had Ralph Rannick, you know, in charge, um, who had previously been a sporting director and two coaches who had never got anywhere close to the level of Manchester United running the session. So you can understand why he's looking at this going, what is going on here? Um, and whilst all that was happening, you know, he was going off to Portugal and he was having his hip flexor injuries. Um, the fans were were still in adoration of him. Um, and so from that, a, a really febrile kind of organic atmosphere at Old Trafford and, and various other grounds around the country, I'm interested to see how it will be in a, in a league that, um, again, not to have a go at Saudi Arabia. They're a developing football nation. They've got a great football heritage. We we saw that at the World Cup, didn't we? The, the amount of fans they had in, in Doha uh, and the way they beat Argentina in that game was fantastic. But it's a, another level for Ronaldo. So I'm, I'm kind of intrigued to see how he adjusts to that. 